Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I'd like to uh, welcome each and every one here today. Uh, if you're a guest among us here today, uh, welcome. Um, <clears throat> may God's grace be with you as we uh, listen to God's word and uh, as we uh, worship uh, him uh, in the word, in prayer. Um, my name is Reverend Jake Fraze. Um, those that are joining us also in live stream, uh, welcome. And those that will be later also listening to CDs, uh, also welcome. And so we are glad today that we could uh, have a day in, uh, in the building or have a building of God like this. It's so great uh, knowing that when we uh, go to uh, different places in the world, they don't have it as well as we do. And, uh, and sometimes to think how great we have it is uh, actually, uh, we don't. We, we don't really appreciate it enough. Um, <clears throat> as I was um, just talking about it uh, uh, this morning, how I sat and read the Bible with my, uh, you know, having a covering over my legs and having everything very warm, uh, and uh, going uh, to Paraguay, uh, you have a little uh, hut uh, where people, they, 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 uh, they sit under there. And we have, uh, you, you just took and painted our house from the inside, most of it, or a lot of it, and, and it looks different. And yet theirs looks always the same. It doesn't matter to them. Uh, when we went into this one little rancho, it had, uh, uh, it was all dark black. And it was like a blue, black, dark, d black, uh, uh, it was look almost like a shiny blue almost off of it. And, uh, and then the man that uh, kind of led us through this or um, toured us in this area, he said, don't touch it because it's, it's all uh, smoke. It's from smoke. So, so, but if for them, it didn't matter. They were as happy as could be. And, and we sometimes, we want to change people like that or we want to be, you know, we want to change things um, from them, and it's not possible to change uh, people like that. They want to be that way. We have to bring them the Word of God or the way they are. And so sometimes we want to change things, and, and we should change, uh, the, our heart should be changed, as we said here, you know, that there is peace in us, and that, that should be uh, changed. And, and we pray that all of us are having peace this morning here that, that are or are listening, that they have peace in their heart. But as we, we see that uh, not all people uh, have that uh, either. And so, but yeah, so things are very well. Uh, the weather has changed to somewhat a little bit nicer as we uh, felt the, the cold. Uh, and now it's uh, come to a little bit nicer. And so we, we all feel a little bit more uh, energetic, at least I do, uh, coming from Paraguay to uh, from 43 degrees uh, temperatures uh, to uh, uh, almost minus 43 in windshield, that it hits a little different. Like it's a bit, uh, you know, gets 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 to you a little bit. So, but anyway, it's great. We have houses. So let us uh, yet before we go to song, let us pray. Father, we are uh, so thankful. So thankful for the world that you have created and, and that where we uh, are today. Uh, I pray we all are. Uh, I, I pray as you look into the hearts of these uh, uh, brothers and sisters that are here, joined here today, that you see that everyone are joyful uh, in, the, in your presence this morning, uh, wanting to hear what you have to say, uh, Lord, even knowing that uh, I am uh, a vessel uh, that uh, is uh, maybe weak, but Lord, we, we know that you are strong and that we praise you for and, and that we are thankful for the country we live in, uh, thankful for the town we have, uh, thankful for the governments that uh, you have put in place. Uh, Lord, uh, that we are thankful for what uh, uh, the building you have given us that we can join in, um, the food that you blessed us with, uh, we're thankful for that. Lord, again, to just be thankful and all around uh, if we're not totally healthy, uh, Lord, may you find or give them strength, uh, each and every one, whoever isn't, that they can uh, find even in that being uh, uh, thankful. 
that the Holy Ghost is uh, uh, poured out into their hearts uh, by you. Uh, and so we, we thank you for everything. And we just pray for those that are sick in the hospital, for those that uh, may be sick at home, or we uh, pray for the people uh, that are uh, poor in the world today, uh, those that don't have the gospel, Lord, we pray for them. May you grant them that also, and, and those that are experiencing war, that, uh, that there is uh, this, uh, discord among in the, the, in the world today. Lord, we pray that there will be peace. Lord, we know that only peace, that real peace is you. And so may people accept you as your Savior. May you also grant strength to those that are in youth retreat now uh, as our own church or on the uh, young people from this church. Pray for them. Pray also for others that are there. Uh, pray for uh, the, uh, uh, <clears throat> yeah, all together that uh, you may grant us the strength here this morning. Thank you again, Father, as we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. We'll have a couple of songs. Let's take our red hymnals and turn to number 412. We know not the hour. Number 412.
Well, thank you for that singing. That's uh, wonderful, uh, wonderful songs. <clears throat> I want to uh, turn to uh, Matthew chapter 13. Uh, first part of the service today, I want to uh, talk about uh, what Jesus brings some parables. And, uh, and he explains why he gives parables. And so I want to start at uh, Matthew chapter 13. <clears throat> So I welcome some of the Sunday school here. Thank you for coming. It's great to uh, <clears throat> see some young people uh, walking in, and as the teachers have them uh, for Sunday school. <clears throat> and so, yeah, Matthew chapter 13, and here uh, is the parable of a sower. And we all know about sowing, and I think Jesus knew that very clearly, as, uh, as they also knew about sowing. They knew about planting things, and, and so uh, here, um, <clears throat> uh, when he starts off with verse 1, he said, the same day went Jesus out of the house and sat by the seaside, and great multitudes were gathered together unto him, so that he went into a ship and sat, and the whole multitude stood uh, on the shore. And he stood, and he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. And when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls, of the fowls came and devoured them. And some fell upon stony places where they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprung up because they had no deepness of earth. And when the sun was up, they were scourged, and because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up, and the choked them. And other fell into good ground, and brought forth fruit, some an hundredfold, and some sixtyfold, and some thirtyfold. Who has, an ear, who has ears to hear, let him hear. So here we can see that, you know, these are, here is a, a parable. And you wondered uh, why he wears a, uses parables, and he, I'm going to explain it. It's, it's um, the next verses, he actually explains it, why he uses parables. And, but here, he um, <clears throat> had a lot of people, they were actually uh, listening to him here. And then uh, the next part of this uh, reading is about that, how he explains why he uses par parables. Verse 10 and on it says, and, and the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? So why would you do that? And he answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. Well, sometimes I wonder why he would have not said, Well, that it was given to all people, and yet he said to these it was not given, and it uh, continues in verse 12. It says, For whosoever hath, to him shall be given, and, who sh he shall ha and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not, from him shall be taken away even that he hath. Therefore speak I to them in parables, because they seeing see not, hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. And in them is... Fulfill the prophecy of Isaiah, which saith, By hearing they shall hear, and shall not understand, and see, seeing ye shall see, and shall not perceive. For this people's heart is wax gross, and their ears are full of he, uh, dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest at any time they should uh, see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their heart and should be converted and I should heal them. But blessed are your eyes for ye they see and your ears for they hear. For verily I say unto you that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see these, those things which ye see and have not seen them and to hear those things which... <clears throat> <clears throat> which ye hear, 
and have not heard them. <clears throat> so here we can again see that <clears throat> what, he's, what he's trying to explain here that, you know, not everyone will hear these words when he's saying, even when, when he's using in parables, he's saying that these people are actually not ready to hear. They're not willing to hear. They're not actually opening up their ears. <clears throat> As he says in verse 15, he says, for these, this people's heart is wax gross. So it has come to the point where they were not willing to do the things that he wanted to do anyway. So he says, yeah, <clears throat> he would speak to them in parables so that they wouldn't even understand. <clears throat> so then he goes on to say, uh, uh, explain the parable of the sower. Then he says, hear ye therefore <clears throat> the parable of the sower. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one and catches away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which received seed by the wayside. Then he goes on to say, But he that receiveth the seed into stony places, the same as he that heareth the word, and anon with joy receiveth it. So right away accepts it. Anon meaning, you know, he accepts it right away with joy. So he receives it with joy. <clears throat> and then he says, And yet hath he not root in himself, but dureth for a while. For when tribulation, listen to this. Listen to this verse, what he saw he's saying. <clears throat> yet has he not root in himself, but during... <clears throat> dureth for a while. But when, for when, tribulation or persecution arises because of the word. Now, that's, that's something else that, you know, when persecution comes, when, you know, the faith in Jesus or, or in the people that had, then all of a sudden there arises, uh, you know, tribulation or persecution, and then because of what? The word of God. That he says, they don't, they don't have, that, that's what fell among stony ground or places. By and by, he is offended. So being offended by the word of God, that's, then they don't have the word, then they don't have <clears throat> the, the proper ground where it was planted on. And so, then verse 22, he says, and he also has, that receives seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word and the care of this world. Now listen what it says. The cares of this world. See, we have so many cares of this world. And so here <clears throat> he says, he also that receives seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word. So they hear it. And the care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he becometh unfruitful. Choking. You know, sometimes when we say, you know, what, what, what does it mean, choking? <clears throat> well, if you swallow something, it doesn't go down, and then all of a sudden you're choking, or somebody is choking you. So it is then become unfruitful, he says. But he that, <clears throat> he that receiveth the seed into the good ground is he that heareth the word and understandeth it. So he understands what it means to work in the kingdom of God. <clears throat> and then, which also beareth fruit and bringeth forth some an hundredfold and some sixty and some thirty. And you all farmers, whoever is farmers here, they will know very well that you know, some parts of the, the land brings more than other parts of the land. So whatever fell on good ground, it didn't all bring the same amount, but it brought something. It brought something. And so <clears throat> here for me is that Jesus spoke parables to people that he realized that they did not want. They didn't want it. They, they, they were not really looking for Jesus Christ. They were not looking for Jesus Christ. They were looking for their own benefits things, <clears throat> And so he spoke in parables that they would not understand. And for me, that I don't quite understand why he would do that, why he wouldn't may try to explain it to them, rather. But you know, 
when I, when I just go back to a little bit to the natives in, 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 in Paraguay there, there too, they said, you know, it almost really doesn't matter how we teach them or what we teach them, they have their own way. They, they don't seem to change things. They seem to think, I have my own way, and that's the way I'm going to go. If they build them little brick houses where they can live in, they don't live in there. They live in their little ranchos where they have a straw houses. That's what they live in. And, and if you bring them a lot of food, well, they don't have enough uh, storage or they don't have this, this ability to think that I keep some for tomorrow. No. Either or. I go sell it and buy myself some drinking stuff so that I can get drunk. Or I just to waste it, just put it aside of the road. So interesting how... <clears throat> How Jesus even spoke also about those kind of people. And so, you will probably know some of this. <clears throat> probably this is not, nothing new. I'm not speaking to people that haven't heard the gospel before. I'm speaking to people that have. So, <clears throat> what can we learn out of this? What are we, what are we learning out of this today? Are we learning that we have, we have changed it already? Or are we in the, in the ground that is <clears throat> bringing fruit? Or are we still also the being, uh, you know, somewhere in, in the deceitful riches or the, in the, in the <clears throat> you know, cares of this world, so much cares of this world? Do you realize that when you look at the funeral announcements, they didn't know that their life would be over? When is Jesus returning? That, that's the first song we sang. We don't know. We don't know. So, so the important part of it is that we don't allow this world to control our lives. That we rather everything is in Christ and that we live that way. So <clears throat> before we go to the second part of the message, I would ask that uh, whoever is able, let us kneel and pray in the name of Jesus. <clears throat> We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's take out our blue books and turn to page 126. We are marching to Zion. Number 126.
Marching to Zion. <clears throat> Today, uh, the text verses that I wanted to use, and, and uh, some of you may have read this. Uh, uh, January 15th, there was a, there was a sample uh, booklet by uh, Beside the Still Waters, and, and to me, this, this, it, it just uh, touched my heart when I, when I read this. And, uh, and I said to myself, why? Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just talk about it at, at, uh, at, in a church service. And it's uh, Matthew chapter 15 from 21. And the devotion was called uh, The Faith of a Dog. The Faith of a Dog. And I want to read uh, Matthew 15, 21 to 31. And it says this <clears throat> Then Jesus went thence and departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan <clears throat> came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is, vex is grievously vexed with the devil. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away. For she crieth after us. And he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not meet to take the children's bread and to cast it to dogs. And she said, Truth, Lord, but yet the dogs eat the crumbs which fall from the master's table. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it, be it unto thee as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. Faith of a dog. This wasn't actually like we would say dogs running around on the streets or the dogs maybe we have. Some of you may have. <clears throat> Luke chapter 17, verse 5, the apostles said unto the Lord, increase our faith. Increase our faith. The characteristics of great faith are easy to pick out if in this story. We may rightly call it great faith because Christ did. Why is it great faith? Why is it great faith? <clears throat> Great faith is discerning and clear-sighted. Discerning and clear-sighted. When we look at this account here that Jesus, when the woman of Canaan came where he was, and, he, and she knew who he was. She knew who he was. <clears throat> and so... <clears throat> She had a problem, and she had a, maybe what we sometimes call medical problem, whatever it is called, <clears throat> she called it vexed grievously, grievously vexed with the devil. She asked for help, and he didn't give her an answer. And then the disciples wanted to just send her away, just tell her to go away, because she is really being you know, bugging us here because <clears throat> they knew she was from Canaan. She was not a woman <clears throat> that was of the household of Israel. As he, Jesus then afterwards, he makes it clear, he says, I am not come, not but sent un, uh, unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That's what I'm sent here to do. You know, that, that, that was the second time already and we Many times we would say, well, you know what? That would offend us. First of all, don't listen to us. And then second of all, saying, well, I wasn't come for you anyway. I was not come for you. But you know what? She didn't give up there. She said, 
She came to him and says, she worshipped him. She bent down before him and said, look, <clears throat> help me, Lord. By faith, knowing that this Jesus, he could help. This Jesus could help. And then he makes it clear to says, you know what? He was not, <clears throat> it was not meat. It was not a thing that you should do to put the bread before the dogs. The children's bread. To cast it to the dogs. That was one thing that was very clear that she said, <clears throat> that Jesus said, that's not what it was for. And you know what? And then the next verse she said, I'm not asking for the children's bread. I'm not even asking for it. She says, <clears throat> truth, Lord. Yet dogs eat, listen to what it said, dogs eat the crumbs. Dogs eat the crumbs. And with these crumbs, she had come to realize that Jesus Christ was the healer. He was the one that needed to come to to be healing. And so she says here, Yet the dogs eat the crumbs which fall from their master's table. As I read before, the people, they were, their heart was wax gross. They weren't listening. They, here also we see that these people had the whole word of God. They had the whole word of God. And they were offended when Jesus Christ spoke to them about God the Father. They even said, we are Abraham's children. And Jesus says, if you are Abraham's children, then you were not going to try to kill me. You were not going to try to kill me. And yet this woman says, you know what? There's plenty enough crumbs falling off the table off the master's table of the word of God that I know who you are. That I know who you are. I know I have the faith in you that you can heal my daughter. That you could heal my daughter. And you're right. Jesus said, you know what? O woman, great is thy faith. Clear-sighted. This woman thought, a, though a Gentile, clearly discerned that her daughter was grievously vexed with the devil. Like I said, many times we think, well, sickness is just sickness. I've listened to many speakers on that have been involved with devil-worshipping he said a lot of the sicknesses that are there, they are not actually God men. Satan puts them there. And we then think, well, we just need medication. I will read that later yet. That's what, she, what he writes here too. We need to do certain things. <clears throat> but when do we realize that it's Jesus Christ that we need to come to? We need to have the faith of this woman. It was not, <clears throat> not faith to deny. It is not faith to deny the truth about ourselves and our needs. Devils, demons, come in many forms. There are proud demons, rebellious demons, and unclean demons. Does our faith identify these? I want to go <clears throat> to Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. <clears throat> and it's part of the armor of God, and it says, for, the rest, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. It clarifies us to us that he's saying that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, it is against principalities. It's against evil spirits, against powers of darkness. 
spiritual wickedness on high places. That is where much of our trouble lies is Satan has a, wants to have a great hold on us, but we have the power of the Holy Spirit. It doesn't say we will have never have sickness. That does not say that. But it says that much of people's sickness today And a lot of it is that we, we think too much. We are too afraid, afraid of the things of the world and how the things of the world is going to go. Or we have other people's influences that influence us about things. <coughs> Great faith recognizes Christ as the only cure. One is amazed at the gentle, uh, gentile woman. She recognized that Jesus is the son of David and that, and that in him is mercy. Many people turn to, and as I said before, they turn to medicine, psychology, aerob uh, uh, aerobics, and self-help programs. And yet few turn to Christ. Few. And when I read that, and I said, that is exactly right. We turn not to Christ, and that is where we need to turn. Our faith, our great faith, we need to have that great faith. <clears throat> Luke chapter 7. There was a woman that came to Jesus also. And she also had great difficulties. <clears throat> Luke chapter 7, verse 36, starting... Verse 238, he says, And one of the Pharisees desired him that he would <clears throat> eat with him. And he went into the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet. And behold, a woman in the city, which was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointment, and stood at his feet behind him weeping, and began to wash his feet with tears, and wipe, did wipe them with the hairs of her head, and kissed his feet, and anointed them with the ointment, with the ointment. So look at this. Where did this woman turn to? Where did she fully turn to? To Jesus and at the feet of Jesus. That's where she stood and weeped. Why? Because she was bothered by her sins. She was bothered by her sins. And when then, at 41, or verse 48 to 50, says this, And he said unto her, Thy sins be, are forgiven. <clears throat> and they that sat at meat with him began to say within themselves, Who is this that forgiveth sins also? And he said to the woman, Thy faith has saved thee. Go in peace. You see, the cares of this world is so great today, so great, that even that makes a lot of people sick. Makes a lot of people sick. They don't, <clears throat> they turn to other things then, and I pray we don't, but the other people do. Luke chapter 4, he says very clearly, Luke chapter 4, verse 18, said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. To the poor. Is that the lady that was also came to, that the, falling, the crumbs falling off the, the master's table? He came to preach to these people that he was a tree, true healer. Further, he says, And he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. These are the things. He was anointed to preach the gospel. The Spirit of God, the Spirit of God was upon Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Lord, and that we have faith in Him that he can do these things and not saying, well, i got to just live with this.
Great faith is humble. The woman came with no claim of personal merit. Her attitude was modest and self-depreciating. Jesus' response would, be, would have turned many others away. You know, that's a question. How many of us would be turned away and we would say, well, you know what, he's not even listening to me. Then he say, well, I prayed, I prayed, I prayed, and yet I'm not getting through. Or when they say, you know what, he's not listening to me, or he says, wow, he wasn't even comfortable for me. How many of us would be offended when we would hear that? Would we persist ongoing in faith saying, no, I know you, Jesus. I know the crumbs that fell. I know the one. Would we be persistent to do that? And then the other part is, is that, <clears throat> Then he said, well, you know what? I can't cast the bread to the dogs. How many of us would not be offended if somebody called us a dog? We would, we would ask that question. The offense would already come. As I said before, the word of God would come in tribulation and trials, and then in other part would be coming And persecution, why? Because of the word of God. And then many be offended. How many? Would I be offended or would you be offended if, if this is what happens or came forth? Or would we persist in our faith and saying, no, I know you, Jesus. I know the crumbs that fell. I know, I learned that, that you were the healer. Maybe I don't know all the Bible, but one thing I do know is I'm not offended when you call me that or when I'm not given the bread. First, he gave her the silent treatment, and then he implied that she was a dog, but still she came meekly accepting the truth of Christ's words. Accepting Christ's word. Great faith is earnest. It recognizes opportunity. Today, Christ is in your coast. Today, Christ is in your coast. Seize the opportunity as the woman did. Maybe your heart needs healing. Maybe your heart needs healing. Or your home. For your love for your family. How desperately are we seeking Christ? Or do we have faith in this Jesus Christ that can cure this? That the devil has to flee. The demons that are rebellious that have to flee, they have to go. How many of you have that faith? And I think that's where we need to know Jesus Christ to the full. The defining moment is in verse 27. The woman allowed that the bread should not be taken from the children, but she humbly implied that, a dog, that as a dog, she was entitled to the crumbs. You know, many times we, you know, when, when we, we have younger children, as we see that, you know, there's a, you know, younger children here in the great that is, and so when they start eating, things fall to the floor. You know, for us, when the grandchildren come down, and all of a sudden we have a lot more crumbs on the floor. We have to sweep more often. And that's what they picked up. That's where this woman, she picked up. She says, I'm entitled to those crumbs. I'm entitled to those crumbs. In effect, she said, by calling me a dog, you grant my request without infringing on your rule. Without infringing on your rule. I ask only what falls to the least, the lowest or lowliest. Jesus gladly rewarded that kind of faith. 
Then I look further on Luke chapter 16, and it talks about crumbs. Luke chapter 16, starting at verse 19, it says, And there was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his feet at his gate full of sores and desiring to be fed with the crumbs. Desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked her so his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torments, and seeing Abraham afar off, or Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy, in, in thy lifetime receiveth thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things, but now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And beside all this, beside all this between us, there, you have, there, <clears throat> us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from thence or hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. Then he said, I pray thee, therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house. So here we can see this rich man had everything. He probably had, like he said, purple, sumptuously, he very clearly dressed well, and yet he also had the word of God was very rich with him. Because the crumbs that the poor man ate was the word of God because he also needed Jesus Christ. He got healed by the word of God that fell off the crumbs from this rich man's table. Then the poor man also needs Jesus Christ. He also needs salvation. It's not because he's poor. It's not because he has no money. Lots of poor people that will not be in heaven either because they didn't accept Jesus Christ. They didn't have faith in him. And there will be rich people in heaven for the reason it wasn't because <clears throat> they're riches or they were poor, but they accepted Jesus Christ and they had faith in this Jesus and they knew this Jesus. They knew this Jesus. Rich man, rich in the bread of life, the word of God, had all of it but kept it to himself because he was so too busy with the cares of this life. Lazarus was busy gathering crumbs that fell from the rich man's table. You know, when I read Matthew chapter 19, I'm not going to read that today, but <clears throat> Matthew 19, verse 16 to 26 today, the rich man. He came to him, to Jesus, and says, what do I need to do to inherit the kingdom of God? And then he says, I, you know, do these things as a commandment. And he says, I've done them from my young on. I, I've done all these things. And I know I probably said it before, but then he thinks he's good, you know. No, and then he says, sell everything you have. Give to the poor. And then follow me. Only realizing one thing, that the cares of this world had swallowed him up and that he would not be able to do that. So he was sad. He was sad. He couldn't. 
His God was his money. His God was the money. The love of money is the root of all evil. The woman in Matthew 15 had great faith because she was busy gathering the crumbs that fell from the master's table. Matthew 13, 15. Then I should heal them, he says. If they would come to him, I would heal them. <clears throat> As we are rich in the scripture, the word of God, let us have this great faith in God our Father and Christ our Savior, who came to heal us from ourselves and our sins to give us power by the Holy Spirit or Holy Ghost so we can overcome, that we can overcome. Let us put on all the whole armor of God which we find written in Ephesians chapter 6. I want to share that yet. And I think these are the things we should be very um, aware of Put on these, the whole armor of God. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10, starting, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, and against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, <clears throat> that ye may be able to stand against, withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, <clears throat> having your loins girt <clears throat> about the, with truth. <clears throat> <clears throat> and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, therewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Shield of faith. The gospel of peace that we are prepared. <clears throat> shield of faith that we, as it says, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching <clears throat> thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Let us close in prayer. <clears throat> Lord, praying prayer. Lord, we, we come before you again this, uh, this morning as we have read your word and may there be a great understanding, Lord. And if we haven't chosen today, Lord, that, that choose today to follow you, Jesus, to have faith in you and that we'd never give up that too often when there are things going wrong then we want to give up. That, Lord, that we do not give up and that we take the example of this woman that had great faith. Even though, Jesus, you didn't speak to her right away or you had. These things that you came to do and yet she took the crumbs. And Lord, if it's all we need is the crumbs to have this great faith, faith of a mustard seed, that we can move mountains. And Lord, may some things seem very mountainous, maybe in our lives. And if they are, Lord, may there be great faith among whoever is listening today, among the church today, may it be local or at large, may there be great faith 
knowing that you can cure, no matter what difficulties we go through, that there's cure, and it's you, Jesus. Jesus, we pray that you rebuke the enemy, Satan and his forces, that they have no business, even those that have come here today or those that will be listening, when they hear it, that you'll be there and the evil spirits have to flee. Thank you, Jesus, for hearing that. May this honor and glorify you, Father, as we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. <clears throat> we don't have to pray only here. We can pray anywhere, morning or evening, if need be, day and night. So let us kneel, whoever, whatever you have on your heart, pray yet. Let us kneel. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's take our blue hymnals and turn to number 447, Send the Light. Number 447.
Thank you for the song. <clears throat> there will be a, a meeting held in uh, uh, next Friday, February 2nd, uh, two, at 7.30 p.m. in Steinbeck, and it's concerning about the, uh, a private school. Uh, the, in the Brotherhood uh, meeting, there was uh, discussed about uh, uh, starting a private school for Summerfeld Church, uh, Summerfeld Mennonite Church, and uh, in different areas. And so if uh, you are interested, please, uh, 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 in Steinbeck uh, Church, there will be a meeting February 2nd at 7.30 p.m. So, and if you have any other information you would like, uh, there is, uh, you could contact uh, Reverend Herb uh, Unra or Reverend Peter Berg. So one of the two you could uh, contact if uh, you want to, uh, uh, some more information about that. So, <clears throat> so as uh, far as today is concerned, I have... Uh, Nothing more to uh, bring that or want to bring you, except I want to uh, thank you all for coming. Thank you all for coming. And so, just want to bless you yet with a benediction. Let us uh, bow. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. The Lord preserve thy going out and coming in from this time forth and forevermore. Amen. You may go in the peace of the Lord. Remember that Jesus loves you. Could I ask the ushers to come forward? Mm-hmm. <clears throat>